influences five to twenty billion dollars worth of revenue in this marketplace. Um, so of the thirty, I'm sorry, of the thirty-five billion generated in the industry. So realize first and foremost that eighty-six percent of addicts use the internet for treatment research. Um, you'll find that that number is actually slightly increasing every year. So just about everyone who is going, coming into your programs is flat out absolutely going to your website and you'll find that more and more of them are actually converting from your site. So perhaps they heard of you from an outreach coordinator, perhaps they um, you know, went to a, a detox program down the street and they're looking at an inpatient program uh, from a referral, but you'll find that they actually pick up the phone and call you once they've been to your website. And as your own consumer habits kind of dictate, think about how you shop, think about if you had any other medical decision to make, um, even if you're going on vacation, for whatever reason, you're always going to check out the amenities of the hotel first, right? Is there a swimming pool even though I don't plan on using it? What does the food look like? Um, and so you're in this sector somewhere between medicine and hospitality. And Google absolutely controls a majority of the market share. So I will be specifically referencing Google's data and Google in direct opposition to Bing and Yahoo for today's purposes. Uh, so also realize that the most successful addiction treatment facilities are using a mix of marketing channels. So here's, here's the general breakdown in the industry. Uh, a direct sales force. So these are your outreach personnel. Uh, this is your um, referral and professional network. And these are other treatment facilities. There's a, this, this is a wonderful industry in the sense that you can refer patients back and forth to other quality programs if they're a better fit culturally, if they're a better fit clinically, um, and even monetarily, depending on insurance coverages and cash pay options. So this direct sales force, out of all channels possible, is actually going to almost always be your lowest cost per admission. The second lowest cost per admission, it requires time, it requires outreach, but you should be running strong alumni programs anyway. Um, it's a low cost, high conversion channel. If an alumni speaks to a friend uh, who's suffering from addiction, they're going to ask, well, where did you get well? What, why are you achieving such long-term sobriety? Um, I've gone to three programs before and I've relapsed every time. You'll find that you can publish your outcomes data directly to alumni, um, to family, to friends. The more you can stay in touch with families, the higher likelihood that if someone did relapse, they'd come back to your program as opposed to blaming you smearing your reputation on social media and going elsewhere uh, for treatment. So focus on those two channels, direct sales force as well as alumni as your low cost admissions channels. And then realize that more and more, um, while they were cost prohibitive a few years ago, because of the increase in cost, the inflationary cost of a lot of digital campaigns, all of a sudden television and print advertising are actually coming in at a reasonable cost per admission. Um, this doesn't mean just blindly sending out direct mailers. It doesn't mean just blindly, uh, you know, throwing up a TV commercial. But what you will find is that local targeting in markets that you know you bring a lot of admissions in from uh, presents an opportunity for you to, to get your brand out, to get awareness out that your program is growing. And to some extent, if you run a quality program, it's almost your duty to get the word out that your program is strong. Um, otherwise, you're going to find a lot of patients going to programs that are weaker clinically or aren't the right fit for them culturally, and they're going to fail. They're, they're going to relapse, and you could have prevented that through stronger advertising. You could have gotten them to come to you and received a higher quality of care. Um, paid leads. So what I mean by this is not paid search. This is um, listings channels such as rehabs.com and, and psychology today where you can pay for a directory listing and they generate a lot of calls and referrals both from uh, professionals and from uh, geographically targeted searches so this is the channel nobody likes to talk about however rehabs.com and its affiliated properties just sold to American addiction centers for sixty million dollars so we, we talk to a lot of clinical folks and a lot of executives who say, oh, I don't buy calls. Oh, I don't pay for those listings. But they're worth $60 million or more in business. So 
this is a common practice. Um, the irony is that you could actually generate these same calls. So these other websites that outrank yours, and they generate all this traffic and all these listings and, and calls, they're deploying the same strategies we're talking about today. So they're actually generating these calls with paid search and with SEO. Uh, Rehabs.com was heavily organic search, almost entirely. Um, and what you're going to see is that anybody who's buying calls and leads this way, you're paying a markup on calls to that company that you could technically generate for yourself if done the right way, if you can do this strategically. So then the final channel, the internet and, and digital channel, um, just realize that that's where your market is going. That is where your consumers are. This is all ages and demographics, and the statistic is from Google themselves. Uh, for addiction treatment, 86% of patients use the internet to research or find the addiction treatment facility they go to. Um, Take that, take that to heart. That is the key statistic here, that you're talking 80 to 90% of your admissions are making their decision once they visited your website. And typically, in a 14-day period, they're only visiting one other site. So it is you and a direct competitor, and you can outposition and outmaneuver that competitor. Um, so how else does the internet help you? Why is it so advantageous? Why are people pumping millions and millions of dollars into this? And, and I mean monthly, not just annual. Um, it actually enhances the close rate of all of your other marketing channels. No, no other channel does this as effectively. So you'll find on average uh, the marketing multiplier is over 25 percent. So what that means is for every one dollar you spend online, you're actually going to get at least a dollar twenty-five worth of marketing because all of these other channels, your outreach coordinators might introduce your facility to a prospect, but they actually come and do their research on the website. Um, so it enhances your offline efforts, it enhances your media efforts, um, it even enhances your networking efforts. So it's, it's a medium by which your prospects, your alumni, and your partners can contact you 24-7, but it never changes the message. It's like the best salesperson you ever had. Um, your programs and modalities are well detailed. Um, if you're near the beach, it's, it's showing pictures of the beach. You're getting a visual. They, the user can actually see what their experience might be like beginning their recovery process with you. Um, and again, as a consumer, think about your own mindsets. Isn't that how you evaluate any transaction, any healthcare? Don't you want to meet the doctor? Don't you want to see how they might treat you? If it's a surgeon, don't you want to know what their plan is for your surgery, or do you think they're just going to wing it? Um, and your goal here is to, you know, share information about your programs, describe your amenities, and alleviate fear. And, and we found that through websites, what you need to do for, for the consumer, they're looking for you to ease their pain. So you begin by alleviating fear, showing comfort, not luxury. This is often misperceived. Um, and showing respect. And, and to the luxury point, you don't need to advertise cures. You don't need to advertise a pool that's the size of 17 Olympic swimming pools. Um, you don't need to have a zip line and, and unicorn rides through a magical rainforest. It's, it's really about just showing comfort. Look, seven days of detox sucks. It's painful, right? It's medicated. Someone just wants to know that there's going to be comfortable furniture to sit on while they've got horrible headaches and, and going through DT and such and their withdrawal. So your website can communicate that more clearly uh, through imagery, through video and photography than any other channel. Um, and then realize that mobile is now making up 56% of searches in your industry. So if you haven't gone mobile already, you're almost too late. More than half of your market is accessing your website through a mobile device and you should be doing mobile first design in your advertising, in your websites, um, and even in other tools. Make sure that your emails that you're sending out are mobile friendly and responsive. Um, so that's what this channel is. This channel is unique in that it multiplies your other channels. You're, you're going to get a 25 percent or higher extra bump from your dollars. And that's why you'll see so many facilities spending a million bucks a month on paid search. Um, and it's an opportunity to capture other technologies and make sure that you're ahead of the changes that are coming, such as mobile technology. So 
how big is this digital market? I was talking about $35 billion of admissions coming from Google. Um, I'm sorry, 5 to $10 billion of your $35 billion market coming from Google. So how many people search for drug addiction treatment on the Internet? 2.1 million searches just from the top three keyword phrases. So I'm just going to use the term a lot because we're talking millions and millions and millions. Uh, three of the 20 most expensive uh, paid keywords on Google are addiction treatment keywords, more expensive than mesothelioma lawsuits. So think about where you are in this marketplace. Um, so to give you a little bit of an illustration on this, right, the keyword drug rehab or rehabs, plural, averages over 900,000 searches per year in the U.S. So nearly a million searches just for drug rehab. And we all know the disease state, we all know the epidemic levels of addiction, but just process that number, one keyword. Then the next keyword, addiction treatment program, over 700,000 searches a year in the U.S. just for that keyword. And drug addiction, over 500,000 searches per year in the U.S. So that's, again, 2.1 million searches just for those three keywords. That doesn't include detox. That doesn't include anyone who's going to treatment for a second or fifth or tenth time because they already know to search for IOP, PHP, inpatient, outpatient, Aetna, Blue Cross, and you, you can name the mix, but the volume here is staggering. So how does that translate into prospects for your business? How is this actually a viable marketing sector for you? On average, a person performs one to ten search engine queries a day. That is all Americans, all ages, all demographics. That is you. So out of 2.1 million, 365 days a year, just from those three keywords, there are 5,753 searches a day for just those three keywords. Wouldn't it be nice to carve out a little bit of that market share? So assume that a person used up all 10 searches that day just on these three keywords. It's 575 people a day minimum. That would be if every single one of their searches was for those three keywords. Um, and multiply that times tens of thousands of actual keywords that they're searching for addiction treatment, recovery, um, IOP, PHP, those other keyword sets. So let's do a little uh, illustration here. If at least 575 unique people per day or 210,000 people a year, this is an absolute minimum. We're looking for addiction treatment services on the Internet from just those three phrases, right? It's a tip of the iceberg scenario, and this iceberg is nearly limitless. This is an insane volume. No other industry matches this. No other industry operates like this. You will not see this in cancer care. You will not see this in diabetes. So realize how truly unique this sheer volume of searches is on Google. Um, so again, this assumes that there, the search queries had at least one of only these three phrases in it. Google processes three and a half billion searches per day in the US and your industry is so relevant and so competitive that you've got three of the top 20 keywords. So if you realize that about 15% of these are new, previously unread queries, that means every day you're, you're getting 15% of your searches from new people. And typically in this industry we've seen more than that um, just through your own website, but it is not the same people coming back to your site over and over. You're getting new searches in massive volumes, and I'm just trying to show you the opportunity at hand. So how do you get them to your site? Why, why is there such a difference? Why is there such an expertise required to truly deliver on organic SEO as well as paid search, which again is PPC, pay-per-click? So search engine optimization, this is the long game. This is the equivalent of uh, building equity through a mortgage as opposed to renting. Uh, it focuses on making a website's content easy to read by Google. And I'm going to emphasize the fact that it's easy to read by Google, not you. So Google is not a human being. Google simply reads text, characters, numbers, and that's it. In, in the perfect world for Google, every website would be black and white, text only, and it would read like a newspaper. So that means you need to have a ton of content. And they've evolved a little bit to include videos, but it can't really search a video. It can only really categorize the title and the description you write for that video. So 
So Google's trying to make all content easy to find, but you need to please Google, not yourself, when you're building your website with high ranking in mind. There are very specific keywords you need to optimize. So, excuse me. Um, this involves activities that produce content that most closely answers a search engine query. So what's happening now with consumers, most of them are actually typing in a very, very specific long tail keyword. So they're not just typing in rehab center, they're typing in Pennsylvania heroin rehab center that takes Aetna. And it's, it's that specific because consumers are becoming much, much, much more savvy at using Google, at using Siri and other smartphone features. And what you're actually seeing is a huge increase in what's called semantic search. That's when you type in a question and you expect Google to give you an answer. So what is the best heroin rehab center program in Pennsylvania that accepts Aetna? If you can actually have these, these long tail questions written out on your website with the relevant answer, your entire site will rank higher and you will find that that converts admissions very directly. Um, and SEO is a strategy that seeks to get your website and content listed in higher positions uh, out of all of the organic search results. So obviously the top three results and a lot of the ads down the right hand side of your screen, uh, those are paid ads. They typically say ad next to them. Uh, this is the natural search results. Those that show up below that, typically they're local in nature. Uh, and you have a duty to show up here. You need to be publishing thought leadership content, describing your clinical care for the same reason you would not go to a surgeon who didn't demonstrate their credentials, their licensing, and tell you their plan for you. Why should someone who's suffering from addiction call you if your website doesn't rank well, answer their questions, and tell them how you're going to help them? So make sure that you're focusing with all SEO efforts on the patient. This is truly a patient first effort. This is part of your continuum of care. Uh, so don't build your site, don't produce your content thinking of yourself. You might have three PhDs and you speak at a level that most people can't even understand. You need to be writing your content for somewhere between a fifth and eighth grade reader. Very short sentences. Don't throw clinical keywords at them. People might not know uh, modalities, right? then they might not know what PHP and IOP are, but everybody knows what outpatient is. Most people know what inpatient is, but it might make sense to use the word residential sometimes. So they realize, oh, that's the program where I go live at it. Uh, so think through those scenarios as a consumer where there can be confusion. Now pay-per-click, how does that contradict and how does that complement SEO? It allows you to pay on a per-click basis, as the name implies, um, every time someone clicks on one of your ads. So you do want to be looking at this strategy. It is quite expensive in this industry, and that's the main concept we'll be addressing today, but um, every time someone does a search for a relevant keyword that you're running advertisements for, such as drug rehab center, your ad will show up either at the top or along the right-hand side of that search result, and you only pay if someone clicks on that ad. Here's what's getting crazy. In this industry, those ads, are costing anywhere from thirty to a hundred and thirty dollars per click. That is truly staggering, truly unheard of as a price. Most industries out there in healthcare are experiencing an average click price between two and ten dollars. And that includes high priced elective procedures such as surgery, plastic surgery, cancer treatment. So your ads will be placed on the most highly viewed section of search results, as well as a wide network of sites where Google publishes display ads and text ads. Um, you can target certain geographies, certain times of day, um, as well as specific queries for specific words, and you can set your budget. Um, you can actually set your budget to change based on time of day, location, uh, and you, there's multiple bidding strategies. You can do an accelerated strategy if you want to get um, all of your searches at a certain time of day, or you can do a standard bidding strategy where it spends the same amount of money each hour of the day. So, as an agency guy, I obviously have some opinions on this issue. Um, I've seen clients that have tremendously efficient campaigns and are truly admitting crazy amounts of patients and helping crazy amounts of people. But I've also seen clients that are spending, this includes the big, big, big players, 
that are spending millions of dollars a month not tracking the conversion effectiveness and they don't realize that their cost per admission is north of ten thousand um, dollars and this is actually running rampant in your industry certain players are buying all of that traffic even if it's cost prohibitive just so you don't get it so it's a play on market share as opposed to a real need for an admission so PPC or SEO the advantage is to paid search you can get immediate results uh, you can purely pay for performance you're not you're not spending a dollar unless you're getting a click from someone who is interested in addiction treatment you get to set your own times and amounts of money to be spent so it's a very easy way to plan a very complex ad campaign it used to be that you had to guess with billboards and signage and, and print ads and just cross your fingers and pray uh, but you now have the ability to buy position in search engine query results Google is an auction which is both the solution to this problem and the cause of the pricing problem so you can pay more money for the same keyword that someone else is paying less money for and your ad will outrank theirs and if it gets clicked on more times you'll actually get what's a what's called a quality score from your ad and it will actually rank even higher so you have the ability to buy this high position for your ad it can show up first as opposed to second in search results but you have to bid a little bit higher or a lot higher um, and another advantage to PPC is that it allows for different formats and differentiated copies so you can do a pretty simple testing you could run two ads side by side they could go to two different landing pages of your website and you'll see that one of them converts very well one of them converts slightly less well and you can reallocate your budget to be more cost effective on the ad that's converting to admissions better so the other issue here is managerial decision making right can you get data quickly uh, paid search is the fastest way to get accurate statistics on your campaign's performance where are my dollars going what are they doing for me what's my cost per call and cost per admission um, and then you have the advantage of a display ad network as well you cannot do retargeting through paid search on Google so if someone has been to your site and you want them to see your ad all over the internet and have it follow them around that is not allowed uh, due to Google's bylaws that this is a sensitive medical condition so uh, imagine if you went if you uh, were seeking addiction treatment and you brought your laptop into work with you the next day and your boss sees rehab center ads all over the place when you're trying to give a presentation so the disadvantage is the PPC again this price is based on an auction process where the ultimate winner is Google uh, Google actually sent a rep to a foundations conference in California this year and I asked him the question I said listen because of the increased auction prices on Google it's becoming cost prohibitive to to use it uh, as a media option in this industry what's gonna happen with supply and demand you know is this price ever gonna come back down and Google said flat out absolutely not it is totally based on supply and demand it's going to continue to get more expensive as long as people are willing to keep bidding on these keywords so in the end Google is making a billion dollars a year from your industry and your return on investment is technically decreasing because it's getting more expensive it's not just getting a little more expensive it's getting more expensive by about 1% a month or 12% a year so you know every six years or so your cost per admission from Google AdWords doubles and at the same time as your industry seeks uh, sees more and more regulation coming into play your payouts from carriers even out of network are going to be decreasing so there is a disadvantage strategically um, to investing heavily in paid search also again the retargeting is not allowed um, so you're gonna have to try to convince excuse me uh, sorry I missed my slide there uh, you're gonna find that you need to potentially pay for the same user to come back to your site two or three times as they're doing their research for treatment and if these are fifty dollar clicks or seventy dollar clicks and they click on the same paid ad three times you're paying a hundred and fifty dollars for someone who's just technically shopping around and considering you as one of their options um, and then realize that about fifty to sixty percent of all internet traffic again is coming from mobile devices 
And most treatment facilities at this point have a very weak mobile presence, a very weak call to action. You need to have very short and sweet mobile ads that have a very strong call to action. The one possession that no addict will ever give up or sell to buy drugs is their smartphone. Um, nationally, we, we've run a huge centralized database on the devices that all of our clients are seeing used to access their websites. Even homeless people have an iPhone Model 4S or newer. This is more than 90% of impoverished Americans have an iPhone Model 4S or newer. So your ads need to be running um, on mobile devices and you need to be seeing um, shorter, sweeter messaging. So some other disadvantages. There's no long-term value. So just like a mortgage versus rent, you're renting with paid search. As soon as you stop spending, the traffic stops coming to your site. Even if you pause your campaign at the end of the month or, or in the middle of the month, it resets your pricing. So it is, again, not, not a long-term strategy. You're also competing over a smaller number of clicks. So 75% of all clicks through to your website are actually made from organic search results. Uh, a lot of people don't trust paid ads. Now that you all know the top three ads and all the ones down the side are paid ads, you're less inclined to trust them and click on them because you don't want to be sold something. You want to be finding an answer to your question. That is what Google is. It is a magical genie that answers your questions and grants your wishes. I wish to get well and have this pain of addiction removed from my life. Who can help me do that? Um, so you're going to find that your conversion rate is lower from paid search compared to other channels and your bounce rate will be much higher. If you're bidding on a competitor's name or a city that you're not located in, sure you can get traffic from that, but they weren't looking for you. You, you almost tricked somebody into coming to your site. So, you know, one in a hundred, two in a hundred might say, you know what, this is still relevant, I'll stay here and check it out. But we've seen a bounce rate on average in your industry that fluctuates between 60 and 90 percent. So out of every click you pay for, that means that they came to one page of your website and immediately left or potentially immediately picked up the phone, uh, but that is less common. So essentially they're going to spend less time on your website learning about your company and it's less, op less opportunistic to drive an admission. Realize that there's an inflationary trend in addiction treatment queries. And this is the meat, the meat of our conversation today, my, my one-way conversation that I'm throwing at you. So hopefully you're not too bored yet. Um, the advantages to SEO, right? There's a more cost-effective, long-term structure to SEO. As search engines rank a website higher over time, you're, you're rewarded for having your domain name exist for a longer period of time. You're rewarded for having strong content quality links from other sites pointing to your content and Google views this as credibility. Um, so you're building something here as opposed to paying for something. Um, it's semi-permanent. It is a way to capture market share that a competitor would have to catch up and surpass you in order to compete. So if you rank number one for Miami Rehab Center, and it's because you built a 1,000 page website and you got 1,000 inbound links and your competitor only has 100 pages and 100 inbound links, they would have to actually outpace you, create another 900 pages, find a way to get 900 more inbound links, otherwise you will outrank them for just about every keyword. So it is advantageous in its permanence, however, it does take longer to get to what I call critical mass. You will need to invest several months um, and a lot of money as well as resources into building your SEO before it will become an effective admissions engine. But what's cool about it is over time it will actually decrease its own cost per admission. It's based on labor which is a constant cost but its return is exponential. Whereas paid search it may have an exponential return but as an auction based program it is also an exponential cost. So uh, you'll see that you can build a portfolio of durable assets that hold equity value with SEO. Uh, Rehabs.com again is the most recent example of this. 
their site ranks so well for so many keywords across the entire country purely from organic SEO that the calls and admissions that it generated for its members made it worth sixty million dollars um, or a portion of sixty million dollars so your website if you invest into it and, and build strong content and create strong linking strategies get your partners to link to your site even on a simple level any dollar you put into that effort typically you'll see back at two to three times if not higher when you sell your business one day or when your website is valued um, I, I speak on that separately, so if anyone has additional questions on that, on the equity value of a site, I can provide a white paper for you to, to read through. Uh, SEO also allows you to enhance your credibility. So if you're showing up just with a paid ad, okay, someone might click on it. But if you have two or three pages showing up in a search result for one keyword, or you're showing up in local search results, it really lends credibility when it comes to partners, alumni, and other audiences. It makes it easier for them to refer you. Um, if somebody spelled your name wrong or typed in a slight variation, they use the word recovery instead of rehab or rehab center instead of recovery center. Um, if you still show up, it's extremely advantageous. Otherwise, a competitor might be showing up. And the fact that your website can be designed for multiple audiences, you'll find that with paid search, you have to create your ads for a very, very specific audience. Um, people of different ages and demographics respond to different keywords and different ad copy. Whereas your website can ask a user right when they get there, are you here seeking help for yourself? Are you seeking help for a loved one? Are you a concerned parent? Are you an alumni? Um, and you can build different sections and, and different types of content and messaging for those audiences. So take all that into account and realize that you'll have more long-term and lasting results from a strong SEO presence uh, than from a strong paid search presence. But again, it is a long-term strategy. So we, we find that uh, very few executives in this industry have, have the patience for it, but they all love the outcomes and the return on investment from it as a strategy. There are disadvantages to SEO. Again, it takes longer to see results. This is an ultra, ultra competitive industry for organic search. It can take from six to 12 months before you see that return on your investment. Whereas again, PPC, it might be more expensive, but you can see that result now. Um, it requires continuous, consistent work to produce results. So Google has made three large algorithm changes over the last year. The most recent was called Mobile Get In. Basically, you don't get penalized if you don't have a mobile site, but you rank much, much, much higher if your site is either responsive to all screen sizes or you have a mobile version of your website. Um, Google then, uh, Panda and Penguin were their code words for two previous updates. The goal there was to say, okay, any old website that just had a thousand pages of content and ranked really well, but hasn't been updated in 10 years, let's make sure those guys don't outrank somebody who is might only have a 50 page website but they're constantly adding to it and keeping their content fresh so this requires consistent frequent you know it's better to blog every other day than to post 15 blogs today and let it sit for the month um, but this requires continuous consistent work to produce results it is labor it is a human being it is a combination of graphic design web development copywriting and link building these are all different skill sets so you'll find it difficult to obtain one person who can do all of these things. You're going to want to have a dedicated team uh, working on it from all angles. And another disadvantage is that it's difficult to discern direct and indirect admission effects from the campaign. Uh, with many of our clients, they'll see their traffic increase 50%, 100%, 500%. But when their phone rings, it's somebody who's heard of them before. So maybe an outreach coordinator had been in touch with um, a rep, you know, three weeks ago, but they're converting through the website. So you'll have to find a way to measure, you know, which, which admissions are uniquely generated purely through organic search and which of them were simply an assist. And it's very difficult to segment that without your admissions team focusing on it. And then again, this strategy requires skill sets that are difficult to obtain. So back end coding, you need strong developers, um, Inbound linking, you need someone who can actually get your content picked up and shared on other websites. It's a PR skill set. 
Um, someone that can tag your site for the right keywords. The actual research itself needs to be on point, otherwise you're just guessing and, and you're spending money to guess. Um, and simple factors like increasing the load speed, I'm sorry, decreasing the load speed of your website. Google will actually rank your site higher if it loads faster. That means someone needs to know how to compress images to a smaller size, use Google Webmaster Tools and speed testing uh, to optimize that, um, and reduce the use of large images throughout your site. So optimizing your site as well to ensure that search engine robots can quickly and easily find your site. Google is software. So um, PPC or SEO and why you need to choose. You can jumpstart an SEO campaign with PPC. If you're, if you're looking to achieve this harmony, um, again, think about a mortgage. In the beginning, you're paying a lot of interest and gaining very little equity. But over time, your same monthly payment will build you more equity, less interest. So let's view SEO as the equity component and PPC as the interest component. It's temporary. So you might want to kick off a campaign with a lower SEO spend and an aggressive PPC spend. It's going to get you that quick traffic, high quality, relevant. Uh, but then you can actually, as you see what keywords convert, you can pull back on your PPC budget long term and keep SEO constant. You can actually phase out a large portion of your paid search. Uh, leave, you, you do want to leave some defensively so your competitors can't bid on your own name and steal your own patients and alumni. But you can scale back, and if you keep SEO constant, your labor will actually snowball on itself, and it compounds. So if you did 100 hours of SEO work this month, and next July you did another 100 hours, the result will next July will actually be double that of the result this July. It compounds. It will be as though you did 200 hours of work next July. Uh, and that oversimplifies the concept, but generally as your facility ranks higher for valuable keywords that you'd otherwise have to pay for, you can decrease the paid search spend if needed um, and it allows you to fluctuate better for, for things like seasonality. This is a very slow time for facilities nationwide for admissions. In the Northeast where you have your strongest insurance carriers, it is warm and sunny. So your folks from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts are not flying to Florida. Why travel to California and Texas? Um, and you'll also see that it's unfortunately, the sad truth is, fewer people are seeking addiction treatment during the summer. They're happy. They're, they're surviving. Um, whereas the depression and anxiety that often come with wintertime will drive more people to seek treatment. The holidays, um, Thanksgiving, Christmas, even actually the, one of the two highest days of the year is the day after Halloween for admissions, um, followed closely by new, the first two weeks of January with the New Year's resolution crowd. So your paid search can help you to strategically acquire that seasonal trending, right? But your organic search can keep your paid search costs down throughout the rest of the year. Keep that cost per admission low. Um, and then realize that when your beds are full, you might even be able to decrease your SEO spend uh, because it will stay strong. It will drive a similar number of admissions month to month and you can focus on maintenance and ramp up as needed. If you see that you're experiencing a 10% vacancy and, and census issues at any time, you would readjust that labor. Uh, so in how to make that choice, you'll see a, a graph on this page that kind of illustrates similarly to a mortgage amortization chart, right? If your equity is the blue line and your interest is the red line, that's similar to how PPC and SEO work. Uh, this is an actual Google Trend chart for the addiction treatment industry. So these are actual inquiries and clicks coming from uh, organic versus paid search. As your facility ranks higher for valuable keywords, decrease your PPC spend in direct correlation to how much increase you've had from SEO. If paid search uh, spend stays the same annually, if your budget, excuse me, stays the same annually. So you spend $100,000 this year and you want to spend $100,000 next year. Because the cost of paid ads has increased 10 to 20 percent, you're going to get 10 to 20 percent fewer admissions from that same budget. And if your paid search manager is able to get you the same number of admissions, it means they got to 10 to 20 percent more efficient per dollar and you need to go give them a strong pat on the back. 
So, ways to improve your AdWords campaign. We're getting into the nitty gritty of the tactics here. Um, research keywords that you think your prospects are searching for. Obviously, that's where you begin a campaign. Substances, locations. 83% of searches include an insurance carrier's name. You cannot use a trademarked name in a paid search campaign, but you can build carrier-specific content on your website with organic content. So think about that when you're looking through what keywords your prospects might be searching for. Um, you can write targeted ad copy and geography-based ads very quickly in AdWords. You can go after other markets in other states where you don't even have a location. If you know that the, the payment is good and that you're bringing a strong uh, number of admissions and percentage of admissions from that market. Again, you'll see a lot of the country targeting the Northeast, California, Arizona, Texas, because that's simply where the carriers have the strongest programs and payouts. Uh, you can develop separate landing pages for each PPC campaign and track the results. So you could have a men's program campaign, a women's program campaign, uh, opiate specific treatment pages. And you can see what's really uh, converting your dollars into the strongest patient base and what's really building the best fit. You want patients that are also strong clinical and cultural matches. They will be the most responsive, they will have the strongest treatment outcomes, and that is a huge multiplier on the rest of your marketing. Um, so don't just spend, send your PPC traffic to your homepage. You'll find that it always has a lower conversion rate because it's not targeted. Um, using filters, so day parting. There are certain hours of the day that more people call seeking addiction treatment. Only run your ads at those times of day. Um, it actually does fluctuate from program to program, so I'm not going to give you the specific hours, but think about when you might call if you were making an inquiry. Before work, maybe on a lunch break from a mobile device, maybe in the evening just after dinner, and maybe at 2 a.m. after the bars close. Um, those are generally when you'll see those increases, so make sure that your budget is weighted towards those times of day. And you can also add negative keywords to your campaigns. A lot of treatment centers don't do this. Uh, the biggest of the big are, are victim of this. Exclude words like free. Um, we've had clients that want to rank well for a city name, such as uh, Philadelphia. And they'll then show up, their ads will show up when somebody is searching for a Philadelphia red light ticket. And it's totally irrelevant that they had to pay for that search. Um, so make sure that you're putting negative keywords that you don't want your ads to show up for in your campaigns. It's very easy. Um, and also realize that you're going to get phone calls. This, this industry is very expensive, so the average program is spending anywhere from ten dollars to $100,000 a month on AdWords right now. And that's, again, an average program. Your Google rep, that's huge. They're going to call you all the time. They're going to make recommendations. That's a salesperson calling you. Don't just accept their recommendations. They're trying to give you more words to spend more money on at a more expensive cost per click. And we are a Google all-star. We love Google. I'm flying to headquarters next week to meet with our reps, but they're salespeople. That is, that is how they make their money. So when you get that call once a week or once a month saying, hey, uh, looks like you're doing great in the Philadelphia market. Why don't you increase your budget 28%? Here's some more keywords you can go after. Sometimes it's helpful but analyze their recommendations against your own admissions data to see if it's cost effective. Um, and realize that demographic targeting from data provided by Google tools can help you to further refine your campaigns. Um, again, different genders, different ages respond to different types of ads, and you can put more budget and stronger ads towards the higher converting groups. Ways to improve your SEO campaigns. So you can build a lead generation focused website aside from your main site that really encourages call to action, right? So you can use your main website as a corporate showcase of your facility, of your modalities, of your clinical staff and expertise. And you can have another website that is focused on driving admissions where you're saying, look, this is a life or death decision. We're aware of that. Whether you call us or not, make that decision now. Um, and you'll find that some of your competitors are already doing this. You can build these sites out separately and link them to each other, and they'll both begin ranking higher. Um, and they can be branded, they can be unbranded, but typically a branded website actually converts at a higher rate. So why wouldn't you build several? Uh, build specialty program sites for different modalities that you treat. Um, 
and identify who your consumers are, what they're shopping for. So focus on creating, at that point, both quantity and quality of content that constantly uses keywords. Um, you don't want to be shameless about it. You don't just want to have a page that says detox, 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 call now. But you can create valuable third-party data-backed information uh, in an article fashion, in a blog fashion that educates uh, those suffering from addiction. You know, have information on cotton fever, have information on withdrawal symptoms. Uh, think the way WebMD operates. They, they simply pair content answering questions about symptoms and then say, but maybe you want to consult a clinical expert on this for further advice. And that would be your call to action is, why don't you speak with one of our licensed counselors right now? Um, and then realize that there's some opportunity, if your site ranks well on Google organically, it is also pleasing to the Bing search engine, uh, which also powers Yahoo. So not a ton of paid search money is being spent in those areas, but it's typically an older demographic that's using them. Um, although they're gaining slight market share against Google. So by focusing on an organic strategy, you're going to increase your ranking on all search engines. With paid search, you are choosing Google specifically. Uh, so very specific tactics. What kinds of content can you create in both quantity and quality? You can blog more frequently. Uh, this can be first-hand perspectives of an addict in recovery. Uh, this can be um, clinical information, it can be specific to substances, insurance carriers, how to choose a treatment program. Um, you can build targeted landing pages. So they'll rank very well for one specific keyword or topic or demographic. So college student addiction treatment. And you can build a ton of content on that page, 2,000 words all about how someone in college might find a good treatment program if they're looking to stay enrolled or financially why it is advantageous to unenroll, seek treatment, re-enroll, finish your education. Um, so think through each consumer at that level. Videos are the only type of media that everyone trusts. So think through your own perspectives. A written testimonial from Joe H. that says, Facility ABC saved my life and I found Jesus and my mother told me she loved me for the first time in 10 years. That could be true if it's written in text, or it can be completely made up by a marketing person at that company. A video of Joe H. saying that exact same thing and crediting that facility with potentially saving his life, or at least intervening at the right time, is extremely powerful and will increase not only the amount of traffic you receive, but the conversion to phone calls from that traffic. Um, that's testimonials, that's interviews with your staff, um, you've seen infographics out there just taking data from government sources and university studies and sharing it as an infographic image. Um, again, just a pretty picture that shows nine or ten key points of data. Um, we published an interesting one recently about how last year was the first time in ten years uh, that opiate overdoses did not increase. Now, it's at an all-time high, but it did not increase, and it correlates very closely to the decrease in overprescribing opiate painkillers. Uh, so you can publish content like that that's really going to get people thinking and, and realizing they need to seek treatment on a time-critical basis. Um, advertising images, slide share presentations that you can embed in your website, a lot of other industry professionals share that kind of content. A presentation like this one that you have made that's clinically relevant, your colleagues will share. Um, you can make wordles and puzzles and ebooks and white papers. Um, these are all downloadable types of content. But sending out a press release, when it, when it gets picked up, will actually drive more inbound links from the publishing sources. Case studies. Publish your outcomes data. Publish one specific outcome. Anything. It adds to your credibility and it can generate inbound links for you. Um, podcasts, li list articles, um, and again, interviews, quizzes, the list goes on. But this stuff isn't all easy. It's just a variety of specific tactics that you can do. So additionally, you can create a link building plan. The simplest way would be to call all of your vendors and say, put a link back to my website on your website. The more complex plan would be distributing thought leadership style content to other professionals in the industry and making them share it through its quality itself. Data-backed 
specific information that is worth sharing. Uh, you'll find that social media isn't always the strongest admission engine uh, for primary marketing, but as a secondary source, it's a great way to push out and distribute content that does get shared and builds links back to your site. Um, and then stay current. Uh, most of our clients at one point had an IT guy or a marketing person um, keeping up to date at least a little bit with Google and their algorithm changes, but they change constantly. Um, don't be afraid of those events. Prepare for them. They typically publish this information three or four months in advance, and your SEO will stay durable. Your, your site will never get blasted all the way back into the Stone Age. You might lose 5% or 10% of your traffic from a large algorithm change, but it holds its long-term equity value. So what's the bottom line? What, what can you take away from all of this? By using multiple marketing channels, supported by a strong internet presence, and enhanced by a long-term SEO marketing campaign as well as PPC, uh, you can mitigate the rising cost of Google AdWords. You can operate your marketing budget just like a hedge fund. As PPC costs rise, invest more heavily in SEO. Uh, you can decrease your cost per admission or hedge against those costs that competitors will incur. So imagine if your competitor has to pay $7,000 for the same admission you're getting for $2,000. You're going to be able to operate much more uh, profitably and have a leaner operational structure. You can have a stronger staff ratio at that point. Um, there's all kinds of operational advantages to your competitor having to spend more than you to acquire admissions. And ensure a longer lasting stream of new customers. Whether you're looking to make an exit in this marketplace or not, it makes more sense to automate your marketing to a level where you're going to constantly get a predictable number of admissions through your site as an automated stream. Um, and you can find them in any market environment. So the internet should be a significant part of your overall marketing budget. It should already be driving 20 to 50% of your admissions. Do not count on it to fill all beds at all times. It is never going to be that for you. Uh, but 20 to 50% is a reasonable target. Typically right now we're seeing admissions costs ranging from $3,000 to $10,000 per admission from the internet nationally. That number is heavily weighted based on where you're located. Florida and California are very high cost. Uh, view your digital marketing as an investment, not a cost, and think about it the same way you think about your retirement investments and your stock investments. You want to keep management costs low, return on investment high, and build the most permanent value that you can. I realize that it's extremely difficult to stay up to date internally, so you'll need to find the right technology partners, whomever they may be, um, and that your investments are going to require risk mitigation to stay effective. So think like a hedge fund, think like a financial expert. Don't necessarily have your clinical staff operating your marketing content. Um, and there's a key risk here. Just promoting your office manager to a marketing director is not going to work. You need to think Shark Tank. There are so many high-level technology groups involved in digital marketing and addiction treatment that an amateur attempt at it will fail miserably. Um, so build a full team or don't and evaluate your internal and external resources to deliver on this kind of a strategy uh, because there is risk to failure, uh, just simply not implementing right. So all that said and done, um, I've got my contact info on the screen. Um, I can provide a white paper on this topic as well as um, any other related topics. We've got a lot, pretty robust library at this point. Um, but I think at this point, Lakeisha was going to uh, open it up to some questions. Um, let's see. So I'll make sure to get a link distributed out. A few of you have been asking for that. Um, but if anyone else has any questions, they can uh, use the chat feature um, on the control panel now. And otherwise, thank you all so much for your time. And Lakeisha, I will be handing it back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Dan, and thank you everyone else for attending the MetaVance webinar series hosted by MetaVance Billing Service. Now, once you leave today's webinar, you will be receiving a survey on the presentation, and we would appreciate it if you would complete the survey and provide us your feedback. You're also going to receive a follow-up email within two days with a link to view a recording of today's webinar, Search Engine Marketing and Addiction Treatment, Planning for the Rising Costs of Google AdWords.
On behalf of Dreamscape Marketing, Medavance Building Service, and our presenter, Dan Gimp, we thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.